just got the wind. Thank you to the Pompeii Student Association at the College of Micronesia. One more round of applause, please. Our next speaker will speak to us on patriotism. And for this nation to remain proud and standing tall, we must continue to look within to awaken the inner passion of each and every one of us. Our love of country our devotion to each other, respect for our culture, and our pride as fellow FSMers. Please welcome the Honorable Wesley Simina, Speaker of the 19th Congress of the Federated States of Migration. diplomatic board, other dignitaries and guests, and my fellow citizens of the FSM. First of all, I would like to congratulate our nation on this occasion of its 30th anniversary of independence. Most, if not all of us, are quite familiar with some of the American founding products. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure right now we like to carry little pictures of George Washington in our wallets. The more, the better. Some of us are very lucky even to carry pictures of Benjamin Franklin. But what about our own founding fathers? I know we don't carry them in our wallets. What about in our minds and in our hearts? Do we spare thought sometimes for the likes of the Sulaiman, John Manafran, and our esteemed Edmund Henry, who is still among us? I say we should. These are just a few of the several founding fathers who helped forge a nation out of the small islands scattered across the southern Pacific. Our independence falls on November 3 or 3rd. Incidentally, the first previous dates, November 1st and November 2nd, are known as All Saints Day and All Souls Day. This is a reminder to us the living to remember those who preceded us, preceded us. It is fitting that our own holiday develops because we should always remember those who preceded us. They, they were giants, not just because of their physical stature, but because of what they did. They took a handful of minuscule islands and from them forged a country with an exclusive economic zone the size of the continental United States. We are actually quite visible on a world map because of the works of these giants. We stand on their shoulders. Their work was accomplished 30 years ago today. But before that 30 days, 30 years ago, there was almost another 30 years of struggle 
from the inception of the concourse of my commission to the termination of the trust order. So remember, whatever we face in these past 30 years does not compare with what our founding fathers had to endure from scorn, dismissiveness, ridicule, even threat, to final recognition that we were serious, to build a democratic nation where none ever existed, where colonialism was the way of life. Remember the ultimate challenge they faced, which was not to be afraid, but to be confident in the future. Their unselfable and total commitment and determination to the formation of a nation was the only thing that carried them through. I then only describe them as true patriots. Yes, patriots. A nation without patriots, patriots is a nation without a spine. For it is the patriots who live to sacrifice their dying, energy, even families, and ultimately their own lives for the security and betterment of their land, our nation. We in the present are lucky for we have no shortage of patriots. <clears throat> Patriotism to me means more than just the dedication or loyalty <coughs> to a country in the political or military sense. For us Micronesians, it means that mad teacher with a small wage who shows up every school day to teach our children how to hat and suffer. She is a patriot to me. It means that nurse who dutifully works in the hospital during the graveyard shift to attend to our sick. She is a patriot to me. It means that farmer who every day goes and thanks to his caravans to put food on the table. He is a patriot to me. It means that fisherman who goes out fishing daily amid the high cost of fuel to earn some income for a family. He is a patriot to me. Fellow so my clinicians, you see, we can be patriots in our own ways, large and small, so long as you are committed and dedicated to doing your part in contributing something to the development of your country. So have faith in what you do, for it does mean something. Reflecting back on the patriotic works of our founding fathers, I have to admit that whatever our generation faces cannot be as bad as what they had to endure then. Plus our generation now have one advantage the wonderful legacy that they left us, this country of ours. There are those, very few, I hope, who regret the past. They puzzle me and they remind me of the Holy Scriptures. After Moses freed the Hebrews from the Pharaoh, there were those who berated him, accusing him of luring them away from the flesh pots of Egypt. No. Like Moses, we should look forward toward the promised land. What is the promised land? It is our own country, sovereign, united, and indivisible, proud to stand on among the community of nations, which with development and opportunities for its citizens. Can that be achieved? I would unequivocally say yes. Whatever the challenge, we should not give up, and we should not turn back to any flesh pot, nor shall we deviate from the founding principle of our country, unity. I'm sure President Christian will explain that some more. I can only add that unity would be much less without more patriotic citizens, be they politicians, teachers, nurses, or businessmen. That is, it is to say, some might retort, but who say it was going to be easy? Our founding fathers couldn't have thought it easy. Moses himself did not find it easy. It took the Israelites 
40 years in the desert to reach the promised land. We still have several years ago. With why, why 40 years in the desert? Because it took a new generation to arise. Moses himself did not enter the promised land, but his successor, Joshua, did. Maybe among those who are listening to me today is our own Joshua, who in time will lead us where we need to go. Our nation is a stable one. It is a good one. It can be better. It can be great. But what it will take is for us to come together in our own patriotic ways and confidently stride forward as a nation, a unified nation of four states. And that day will come when those trumpets will sound and the walls, whatever they might be to you, each one of us, will fall and we will make it to where our founding fathers intended us to go. For our country has faith here, wherever you may be. So please, love your country. Again, congratulations, my country, for the great states of my commission. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Speaker Simon. The next item on our agenda is uh, cultural performance from the state of Chuk. May I call upon the Chuk Student Association at the College of Micronesia and FSM to please come forward. <laughs>
Association at the College of Micronesia, FSM. I am told that there are vendors selling food around the field. Please, if you're feeling it, avail yourself to the vendors. Our final speaker for today will speak to us on unity. And there is no one who is most appropriate to do that than the President of the Federated States of Micronesia himself. He was there from the beginning and is still here with us today. Please welcome His Excellency Peter M. Christian, President of the Federated States of Micronesia. It was Sakaratan Kepi Tan Kupuran Arakso Don Peyu Nan Marki Nan Ken Likantiko Nan Ken Ken Rogatan Kupuran It was Sakaratan Tan Pato Patron Y Puerke Mangarangar and Tron Katrapane the Patrapanova. Mola Patron Wanki Vice President Natural Wara Speaker Henry and Speaker Simena, your spouses. And Wauniki Kapanati Peterson, Omitangali Warak, Kapana Elimo, and your wife, Kapana and Wayne Yap, Tony Kanangian, 
Krippna and Wayne Desai, Governor Jackson, and your wife. Ladies and gentlemen, to speak or not to speak is a decision that I have been worried about. But I believe that I must speak, otherwise my silence on unity could be mistaken as a silence of ignorance. I have been invited today to say a few words on the occasion of the 30th independence of this nation, our political independence. I join the previous speakers in saying congratulations, congratulations to the people of this nation and good luck in the years ahead. I thank also the event organizers for this opportunity. I am deeply grateful and proud that I can join you today. That I can join you today at this occasion. I wish at this time to say, say a few words on the issue of unity. But, but first, let, let me ask you that while we pause. In, in our, our celebration, celebration for a minute to remember those leaders who did so much, much and, and dared to dream the impossible and that we can and we must become a nation. While we celebrate our political independence, I must ask that we also remember to celebrate the founding document of our island nation. Our Constitution, which the people of Micronesia ratified in 1979. This is an important document, one that some of us maybe did not vote for, but now stand by it and are protected by it. This is the document that declares and protects the rights of every man, every woman, and every child in this country. This is the document that is blind to the differences between man and a woman, guaranteeing equal opportunity for both. This is the document that protects citizens from usurpation of laws against citizens and residents alike, demanding that the institution of governing laws and their execution be blind to color, religion, age, physical handicap. This is the document that provides for all citizens freedom of expression and the right to do process. As we pause today to celebrate our land, let us also take this opportunity to look ahead and make some progress. Let us promise to do better. And let us set higher goals in our effort to provide better and more meaningful education. And let us do the same for our health services. To look above and look beyond today's level and set for ourselves higher goals in our ability to provide quality health for us and a more expensive and more responsive delivery of services beyond our current norms. For those who believe that we are doing good today, why don't we insist on ourselves to do better tomorrow? As in the institution of laws in their delivery and their delivery, so must health and education opportunities for the people of my condition be provided with fairness and a greater sense of dedication. All of 
things we can and must do to help elevate the level of social well-being with the people of this nation. We are often said that our most valuable resource is our people. Unless we deny this statement to be true, we must become more adamant that they be served better. While our government expands its political horizon, establishing relationships with countries far and near, big and small, rich and not so rich, we must also work hard to protect ourselves from ourselves. While some of us have determined to cast away on their own in the hope of doing better politically and economically, I pray that such positions please be reconsidered. For the life of me, I cannot and have not seen how in unity we are strong and divided we can do. I have traveled throughout our Federation, visiting the largest communities and the smallest islands. I talk mostly about two things, unity and the care of the entire Many have said that these are shallow things, but I cannot find any two things that completely support our people and their island nation. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow citizens, some people have said that I am obsessed with the issue of unity on our nation. Yes, it is indeed, I am obsessed. But someone says, life is nothing in I am deeply obsessed. And I support the idea that unity is the strength that the people of my nation has and must keep. I tell you this, this obsession that I have is a good obsession. I invite you to join me in this noble obsession. Keeping the spirit of unity throughout our nation is a call upon which my four years as the president of this nation will come, and for which I have traveled through the islands to gain support for. In this effort, I recognize that given our geography, the particular differences in our culture, and the unique preferences of the individual in stating a sense of unity is easier said For our nation to remain strong, we need the help of our traditional leaders. We need the help of our elected government leaders. And we need the help of our church leaders. We must all have a similar wish for this spirit of unity. Keeping alive the spirit Unity, hyphenation, unity, is like love. <laughs> it cannot be granted, nor can it be taken. It must be inspired, continually guarded, and calls for us to sacrifice part of our individualism in the name of collectivism and become an embracement of our differences and our willingness to compromise for the good of this nation. Keeping the spirit of unity is not easy. As I said earlier, it is made more times, more difficult, and more challenging because the people of the four states of Micronesia are engaged in that difficult undertaking of being one for many, sacrificing this for them. And so far, Aside from the, our differences over the national treasury, we have done well. While we are fundamentally the same as a culture, there are subtle and silent differences that are not only defining, but are also sacred and jealously protected by each clan and every family. And rich by our shared traditions and cultures, which have sustained us as one Micronesian people through the ages, it is incumbent on all of us to keep the spirit of unity alive. Ladies and gentlemen, hope with me that the spirit of unity grows and becomes root, as in the canoe, its parts come together tightly by flexible force, sustain strong waves and waves 
So must be our togetherness be bound by our sense of belonging and need for collectiveness. We have in common, we have in common, we have more in common than we are diverse. Yet it is in our diversities that lie our fiber of strength. Our culture values are born only of the sharing of the changing of time. Before I conclude, I would also pause here to say thank you. I call on Korusia, The next item on our agenda is a cultural performance from the state of Yap. May I invite the Yap Student Association of the College of Micronesia FSM to perform for us. Thank <laughs> you. 